Hello and welcome to a series of videos in regard to establish a better, better understanding to a relationship that is based on one-to-many. Uh, most of the relationship that exists in the real world is one-to-many or many-to-many, -many, but uh, many-to-many relationship has to be broken down into one-to-many anyway. So understanding one-to-many is going to give us a great insight to how to link it to uh, entities in the real world in a relational database such as Microsoft Access. We're going to be using Microsoft Access as an engine in order to establish that understanding. But before we do that, let's go ahead and look at a spreadsheet, Microsoft Excel in this case, in order to show us how bad it is to manage a relational database using a spreadsheet like Excel. Let's assume that I have a, the need to establish a, a link between multiple employees who are working for the same manager. So if you take a look at manager with the manager ID as A124, who is John Smith, who's running the accounting department, the same person is here, and the same person is here. So we have uh, this one here, and this one here, and this one here, uh, managed by the same person who is John Smith. John Smith running uh, the department by managing multiple employees. We could put more than what we have here, but just to make it simple so we could keep track of everything. Uh, Jack Smith works for John Smith because it's in the same row. And Lydia Perez is working for Mary Jones. Linda Robertson working for John Smith. And Cliff Roberts is working for John Smith. And Ahmed Mohsen is working for Mary Jones. But the thing about uh, using a spreadsheet to establish a relationship, I hope you realize that I had to repeat the same three pieces of data for every manager as long as that manager is managing the same employee. So when I entered the data for Jack Smith, I had to mention who is really his boss. Same thing I mentioned who is the boss for Lydia. And notice that this piece of data and the three three pieces of data and these three pieces of data and these three pieces of data uh, I had to repeat those for every employee so there is a lot of data redund redundancy in a separate sheet if I decided to move this from this location into another location if I didn't specify who is the manager I would have no clue who is really managing Jack Smith in the data in the department of accounting or in another way uh, where does Jack Smith works does he work for the finance or works for the accounting? So this is going to become a big issue unless I state everything through the row in order to be, uh, get better understanding about who is working for who. So what is the very first things to do? The very first thing to do is first of all to divide this list into two entities. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a clear division between those two and I'm going to draw this here as a division between the two entities. Now we have an entity is going to be result into a table of course it's called manager and there is another uh, entity here is going to be table uh, employee. So we have two of those entities. We are going to treat them as separate from each other and we need to decide which one of those three I'm going to go ahead and put a color for those and a color for this which one of those three is going to be the primary key for the first table. This is the one knowing that we have one manager for multiple employees. So this is the one in the relation and this is going to be the many in the relationship. So again I would like you to focus on that and in order to go back and look at the one table and see which one of those is the primary key. Obviously manager ID would be the best candidate here and we're going to go ahead and turn it into uh, uh, yellow. And the same thing is the primary key for that many table, which is called table employee. It's going to be also the primary key. So luckily for us, we were able to identify the primary key for each table later or for each entity. But the whole idea is, is really to take those so we will not actually repeat those in the database later because that's really where it gets prob uh, problematic in the long run. When we as much as data, I mean, the more we enter data, the more problem we're going to get into. So I'm going to delete those, or at least uh, hide them for now. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and take them from here, cut, cut them and put them here. 
so we could keep them in front of us to show what we're going to do uh, paste here notice here those going to be deleted but who's going to tell me what uh, Jack works for Jack uh, John Smith that's fine Lydia Berez works for Mary Jones that's fine but now if I do remove that from the data redundancy who's going to tell me who is Linda working for and who's Cliff was working for and who's Ahmed is working for so in order to establish this better understanding we need to add really a foreign key from the one table which happens to be this one here I'm going to copy it and put it right here paste it here and this is going to be the foreign key so let's go ahead and turn it into a different color so it identify itself as a primary key uh, primary key that happens to be added to the mini table and suddenly it became the foreign key the very major distinction between the primary key that I cannot duplicate it I cannot add more than one value with uh, more than one entry for the same value for the primary key in the uh, foreign key of course I could duplicate it because I wanted to identify who is working for who so this first one is going to be identified as 124 and the second one is going to be F130 for because that's the primary key that identify Mary Jones and this is going to be one uh, a124 a124 and f130 uh, this is the piece of data that I need in order to get to see who is working for who in the database and that is my foreign key so by adding that primary key from the one table to the many table it's going to make the link easy to be established and as a result I will be able to say a uh, really Linda Robertson works for that person with the a manager ID as a124 and by linking those two two, bill, two two tables I'll be able to tell who is the one with the a124 it happens to be John Smith who is running the accounting department so I don't need really to repeat that later but I wanted to emphasize this in a spreadsheet because the spreadsheet is clearly cannot be uh, entered with those empty cells uh, because we wanted to really make sure that everything is identified by linking Linda to her boss and Cliff to his boss and Ahmed to his boss but in the database is going to be a whole different story I'm going to stop here and at least we understand now if I deleted this one here I still I'm going to be able to tell by just looking at these three values who is running I mean who's running the department or who's working Linda Robertson working for because I just needed this piece in order to look into this portion of that database to tell me that A124 is John Smith and if I take a look at this to remind me that this is actually Mary Jones let's stop here we don't want to make them very long videos because we're going to record another video videos where we're moving to Microsoft Access Environment itself Thank you for listening, and we'll see you later.